in this session let us discuss about calculus of variations that is in 18 math 31 that is in module 5 in this chapter uh, we study the following contents introduction variation of functional <coughs> variation of and variation of function and functional variational problems use equation These are the topics we discuss in uh, calculus of variations. That is introduction for the calculus of variation chapter. Next, variation of function, variation of functional, variation of function and functional. That is variational problems. Euler's equation, geodesics, and hanging chain problem. For what purpose uh, this topic we study in the case of uh, uh, mathematics that is in the case of applications of mathematics especially when we talk about the use of calculus in certain variations normally we discussed the variations of the function with respect to maximum and minimum of the function of single independent variable and the function of two independent variables with respect to function of single independent variable already uh, we know that how this function is to be uh, taken where the function has maximum and function has minimum let me introduce uh, the uh, recapitulation of this maxima and minima because here we discuss the same uh, concept of maximum and minimum under the integral sign with respect to the function under the integral sign how that varies and what is the uh, outcome of that maximum and minimum well, whenever we call that as an integrand integrand is nothing but function under the integral sign okay let me understand or let us discuss about the basics of uh, maximum and minimum with respect to function of single independent variable and with respect to function of two independent variables now Let us consider f of x that is equal to y be a function with single independent variable. Then, if f of x is Set to have minimum and maximum, minimum and maximum values at the points at the points such that. Such that it must be f of f dash of x equal to zero. 
is the values of x gives the values of x then yep double dash of x at x equal to x1 equal to one value we consider then if this value equal to l then if l is less than 1 at the calculated value of x if l is less than 0 that implies f of x has f of x has maximum at x equal to x1 if l is greater than 0 this implies the of x has minimum at x equal to x1 then uh, this is the general conclusion we have discussed with respect to the function how that function behaves where exactly it takes maximum and where exactly it takes minimum it will be decided by maybe some graph like this we can consider so these points that is with respect to the baseline these points will decide the maximum and minimum from the baseline the same thing will be discussed through mathematical steps that is graphically we can discuss and uh, through the uh, mathematical calculations where differentiation concept is applied in other words we can call it as one of the applications of differential differentiation to the function this is with respect to function of single independent variable and finally what we do the given function at that point x equal to x1 is equal to if it is less than 0 we will be getting negative value if it is greater than 0 l value then you will be getting the positive value in the original function when you substitute at x equal to x1. So, this is what the uh, detail of uh, maximum and minimum when we talk about uh, the behavior of the function maximum and minimum. Okay. So, the next part of it uh, when this function has more than one independent variable. we have discussed that is equal to u then find same time first order derivative that means f of x f y and second order derivative. Here second order derivative only one notation was explaining the meaning of second order derivative. But since it is function of more than one independent variable, then first order derivative there are two terms and second order derivative there will be two values, uh, sorry three values. Then what is the other two values? f x x x comma y f x comma y x comma y and f y y x comma y. So, all these five derivatives you have to calculate and for getting the values of x and y we call them as stationary values. Then those stationary values will be taken by equating these two derivatives to 0 for, for finding the values of x and y let f x equal to 0 that is equal to f y then you will be getting x1 y1 x2 y2 and so on depending on the given degree of the function if it is of second uh, degree the given function only one set of values you will be getting like x1 y1 then what we do with this for extreme values for extreme values extreme means maximum and minimum for x 
extreme values, let let B0 equal to 0, Fx equal to 0, and Fy equal to 0. After getting these values, finding that means your xx comma your yy and your xy at the stationary values. Stationary values you have to calculate. Then afterwards what you have to take is we call it as discriminant delta that is equal to f x x into f y y minus f x y this is whole square is equal to what value so this will be in three different forms this must be greater than zero irrespective of that uh, maximum and minimum okay if discriminant is that is less than zero less than zero then f of x comma y has maximum at that point which point we consider at that point and if it is equal to zero no extreme values no extreme values that means this needs further investigation like that we have discussed and the next one if it is greater than zero discriminant that is greater than zero then f of x y x comma y has minimum at x comma y minimum at x comma y these three possibilities will happen with respect to the functional values at the critical value what we have calculated as x1, y1, x2, y2 depending on the degree of the equation. So this is what the background of studying the variations of the, uh, using calculus, variations of a function means function has maximum or minimum. So working steps for single variable and working steps for function of two variables is like this. This is one concept. Now, what we do here in calculus of variations topic, we use the integral equation and the function under the integral, integral equation will be containing the value of uh, independent variable, the value of y, the value of y dash and then we call it as the function of that y dash that is called functional. Now, let, let us define some of the terminologies which we need to understand how the uh, behavior of this function under the integral sign we call it as a functional how this behaves at a different uh, given conditions. Basically, the uh, calculus of variation topic basically we we use especially uh, in the power in the in the field of uh, understanding the maximum and minimum uh, for the problems which are related to the dynamics of rigid bodies, comma optimization problems and uh, orbits and vibrational problems. So how these uh, applications are connected with calculus of variations means uh, problems in dynamics ok. So problems in dynamics means we, we have discussed uh, the fluid flow motion and uh, the fluid may be considered as viscous fluid or classical fluid then the differential equation which we have to define for uh, uh, classical and then viscous fluids. So those equations will give us the derivatives. So those derivatives will be understood by finding their variations. Okay, that is one thing. And another thing in the optimization problem. So optimization problem, how we uh, discuss the variation of these uh, differentials. 
in the case of optimization for uh, any function which is uh, assigned or given then that function has to be maximized by uh, referring to the given number of constraints and in the case of vibrational problems how the vibrations will occur and what is the mechanics involved in that vibration whether it is due to the solid uh, mechanics or it is due to the fluid mechanics as the vibration uh, vibrations will appear then how to avoid these vibrations by referring to the values of variations of derivatives because every situation that means physical situation is linking with differential equation where differential equation can, consists of the differential coefficients and those differential coefficients will be in the form of ordinary derivatives or partial derivatives now what is the meaning of that functional let us define by taking a simple curve how that curve is going to be joined or how that curve is to, uh, uh, going to be referred uh, where the curve is passing through two given points let us uh, start with the uh, the definition of functional this functional consider a curve through two given points say x1 y1 and x2 y2 then how this curve is to be formed <coughs> that curve will be in the two dimensional cartesian coordinate system that is the point a which we have x1 y1 this is x and this is y and then zero from this point like this this is b x2 y2 then this curve is not the continuation from the point a to b so there is a way a deviation of this curve and then again it reaches b so this will be indicated y is equal to f of x plus a small positive number epsilon and theta of x the curve will be represented but this curve is has the continuation we can call it as y is equal to f of x therefore the curve passing through two given points without uh, with without deviation is y equal to f of x and with the deviation at some point then there is a small positive number along with the theta function this is a function which represents the uh, variation of this function and multi uh, variation is uh, multiplied by small positive number so that to the original function we add it then so we call here uh, the values that is y at x1 is equal to y1 and y at x2 is equal to y2 such that such that this deviation there is a deviation from a to this point for example c if you take and from this point onwards it takes the continuation and then <coughs> it reaches b uh, you might have discussed in the uh, radius of curvature uh, chapter that means that is also another application of differential calculus but there we studied as uh, uh, derivative of arc length that means derivative of arc length from this point to this point again this point to this point so the derivative of arc length derivative of arc length in the cartesian coordinate system what was the equation we derived that is ds by dx is equal to that is square root of 1 plus d1 by dx it is full square now what is this left side this is s is the length of the curve and x is independent variable and y is x therefore s is the total length of the curve but here 
yes is uh, taken from this point to up to here but it takes the deviation and then it, it continues therefore derivative of arc length derivative means variation in the length with respect to variation in x that means from this point it is x1 y1 and from this point it is intermediate point of this next point that is x2 y2 this is x x2 y2 therefore change in length of the curve s with respect to change in the value of x is equal to square root of 1 plus dy by dx whole square suppose you take the application in the same chapter we can consider the application of differential calculus is this one but application of integral calculus to find the total length of the curve will be taken as this is ds is equal to integral square root of that is square root of 1 plus dy by dx it is whole square into dx now if we want to find out the length of the curve this is derivative of the curve yes with respect to x but length of the curve if you want then derivative is to be removed then we integrate on both sides taking integration that is 1 plus dy by dx it is whole square under root that is with respect to x and plus constant so this integral of ds gives us yes then uh, between the limits between the limits uh, it is uh, indefinite integral because limits are not given then s is equal to integral square root of 1 plus y dash square multiplied by dx under the integral sign square root of 1 plus y dash square into dx plus constant so this integral integration gives the length of the curve from the point a to b so that we proceed to include this integration under the given points that is uh, from the point x1 y1 and end to the point x2 y2 that means here the variation of x is there so that x varies between x1 and x2 so that we can consider that yes is equal to integral x1 to x2 square root of 1 plus y1 square that is dx therefore in general how we can write this in general the curve y equal to y of x can be represented can be represented by a function can be represented by a function that is f of x comma y comma y dash such that such that it is called it is called a stationary value it is called a stationary value of of an extremum stationary value of an extremum such that such that it is called stationary value of extremum for this function then integration that is x1 to x2 square root of 1 plus it is y dash square dx can be taken as integral x1 to x2 that must be function of x comma y and then it is y dash and then it is dx so this is an integration between the limits x1 and x2 where x runs between x1 and x1 to x2 having some deviation therefore instead of representing the function like this and 
the function can be taken because here is a derivative, then we can derivative means inside dy by dx uh, may be including x and y so that it is a function of x comma y comma y dash such that this type of representation is called a functional implies such function such function representation such function representation is called is called a functional is called a functional then then we can find we can find the variation we can find the variation of such functional variation of such functional so this is variation of a uh, functional variation of functional when the function is represented in the general form as f of x comma y comma y dash so based on this one important uh, equation will derive uh, due to euler's uh, uh, form that is called euler's equation for functional this is a functional and this is an integration under the integration this is function but this is a functional we call when we represent in the general form the next discussion in this topic is euler's equation what is this euler's equation in uh, that is variations are due to this function then a necessary condition a necessary condition for integration this one that is x1 to x2 f of x comma y comma y dash dx is set to be an extremum extremum means maximum and minimum extremum such that such that partial derivative of f divided by that is del f by del y minus ordinary derivative d by dx of del f by del y dash is equal to zero. This is called Euler's equation in calculus of variations. Now we shall see how this necessary condition is to be satisfied in order to give the extremum. Uh, that means both maximum and minimum values for the given function how this integral behaves let us uh, derive this equation uh, using certain assumptions now the proof of this condition necessary let y is equal to y of x be the curve be the curve joining the points joining the points same as we defined in the introduction x1 y1 and b x2 y2 so that so that the integral so that the integral this one x1 to x2 f of x comma y and y dash dx is equal to i take this symbol as integration symbol uh, that is i
n extremum then then that y of x otherwise the f of x then y equal to y of dx can be taken as can be taken as that means the curve which I have drawn x1 y1 this is y is equal to f of x and this is y y of x this value that is slightly different from the lower one can be taken as that is y is equal to yx plus of epsilon and then theta of x where epsilon is a small positive number epsilon is a small positive number And e of x will be the small variation it is given to the functional. Then, then we define according to the variation we define two values that is at a at a e of x equal to x1 that's equal to theta of x1 equal to zero and at b theta of x equal to x2 that is equal to theta of x2 that's equal to zero then then the i integral that is the integral i can be taken as i can be taken as i equal to that is x1 to x2 f of x comma that is the integration we have behind that x comma y that y means yx plus of epsilon theta of x comma and in place of that is y dash that must be y dash of x plus of epsilon and theta dash of x that is total value it is dx and that is the uh, modified integral the earlier integral was containing integral i is equal to x1 to x2 f of x comma y comma and then y dash this is y is equal to yx the function takes uh, with the variation and its derivative that will be y dash of x plus epsilon into theta dash of x dx according to the variation whatever we have taken then we need to uh, calculate the value of the integration that means the function will be maximum or minimum then we need to differentiate this and we have to equate to zero as i discussed in uh, introduction that is function of single independent variable and function of two independent variables so with respect to uh, independent variable we have to uh, uh, take the differentiation and then we equate to zero therefore for the function to have maximum or minimum such that such that d i divided by d epsilon we consider the parameter because this is an integration differentiation under the integral sign we take that is equal to zero at epsilon equal to zero then differentiating under the integral sign what we 
uh, followed the rule that is called Leibniz rule, differentiation under the inverting sign. Then, that is d i with respect to epsilon, that is equal to x1 to x2. The equation is del f because it is a function under the inverting sign, del f by del x and del x by del epsilon in place of x that is a function plus of del f by del y into del y by del epsilon plus of del f by del y dash into del y dash divided by del epsilon that is dx under the integral sign and uh, here epsilon is a small positive number I, I said this one so that differentiation of x with respect to that epsilon becomes 0 del x by del epsilon equal to 0 then this term differentiation of differentiation of x with respect to constant means that is equal to 0 such that del y divided by del epsilon del y by del epsilon the next term is equal to theta of x then this can be taken as that is y dash because it is derivative there is a change in y with respect to epsilon that is then del y dash divided by del epsilon can be taken as theta dash of x. So these three values we have identified 1 and then 2 and then 3. That means this value we have taken as y dash and this value we have taken as we have taken as theta of x that is theta dash of x differentiation under the integral sign because that function contains three quantities so three means it is a partial derivative then individual term we have to make the differentiation the next step we consider these substitutions in the integral and then according to the uh, maximum minima procedure it is to be equated to zero how we take that is di divided by d epsilon is equal to under the integral sign x1 to x2 this term totally becomes 0 and the next term will be del f by del y that is theta of x minus it should be uh, this this will be taken as this is del y by del epsilon it is theta of x we are written and this part of del f by del y dash can be taken as d by dx of del f divided by del y dash of theta x and the whole thing with respect to x such that uh, anyway this is equal to 0 because di by d epsilon we claim that, that di by d epsilon is equal to 0 then 0 is equal to x1 to x2 del f by del y theta of x minus d by dx of del f by del y dash and theta of x the whole thing that is dx equal to 0. In the next step you can, you can take this theta of x as a common function 0 that is x1 to x2 del f by del y that is theta of x can be taken outside minus d by dx of del f by del y dash whole thing multiplied by theta of x into 
it is dx and this is equal to 0. When this function, this integral equal to 0 means the integrand must be equal to 0. The integrand must be equal to 0 means we consider delta by del y minus d y it is dx of del f by del y dash multiplied by theta of x to both these terms that is equal to 0. That means the function under the integral sign. The function under the integral sign. The function under the integral sign should be equated to 0. So, what we have to consider then? That is del f by del y minus of d by dx of del f by del y dash that is equal to 0 divided by theta of x. This value is equal to 0, which implies del f by del y minus d by dx of del f by del y dash that is equal to 0. This is called Euler's equation. which is called Euler's equation. Then what we do here with uh, Euler's equation in calculus of variations, how the integral can be performed. One example let me take on this uh, application, uh, how this Euler's equation will behave for the given type of function under the integral sign. For example, find the extremal, find the extremal of functional, functional that is i y is equal to 0 to pi by 2 y square y square minus y dash square minus of 2 times y sin x and then dx under the conditions under the conditions y at x equal to 0 that is equal to 0 and y at pi by 2 that means x equal to pi by 2 that is also 0. We use these two initial conditions for this given function that is the integration and uh, uh, this is called functional and we have to use these initial conditions and find the extremal of this function. So, extremal means that has the minimum and maximum variation. So, together it is called extreme values, but in this case extremal we call because numerical value in terms of that we have discussed in the basic uh, uh, maximum and minimum, but here in terms of variables we discuss it is called as extremal. Extremal means minimal and maximal. Okay. Then, solution of this problem will be so, first of all, let us take the given integration, given that, given that we consider that is i of y, i of y is equal to 0 to pi by 2 y square minus y dash square minus of 2y into sin x that is dx. Then, According to Euler's equation, okay. 
according to Euler's equation. Euler's equation we have f is equal to that means f this is the function under the integral sign f of x comma y comma it is y dash then this is equal to y square minus y dash square and minus of 2y that is sin x then we consider del f by del y there are two derivatives in a universe equation then we have derived that is del f by del f del f by del y and del f by del y dash therefore let us calculate like that del f by del y is equal to with respect to y only that is 2y and with respect to y means this is y dash it's a different value with respect to y means minus of 2 it is sin x and del f by del y dash is equal to minus of 2 times y dash this is zero and this is zero because uh, the first the first term and third term are not containing y dash then differentiation of this is minus of 2 times y dash afterwards we substitute these values in the here yeah, in the euler's equation then we will separate the value so by euler's equation by euler's equation what is that del f by del y minus d by dx of del f divided by del y dash that is equal to 0 so del f by del y means it is 2y minus of 2 sin x and this is minus minus it is d by dx of minus of 2 times y dash is equal to 0 then everywhere 2 is common so that 2 into y minus it is sin x y minus sin x minus of d by dx of minus y dash that is 2 is common b equal to 0 then y minus sin x and plus sin with respect to x y dash means it is dy by dx dy by dx if you write the value of derivative here minus minus plus it is d by it is dx and then of y dash this is 0 divided by 2 that's equal to 0 then y minus sin x y minus sin x and plus sin d by dx of y dash means it should be y double dash that is equal to 0 so finally what we got this is a differential equation of the second order let us write like this y double dash is equal to y double dash plus y we have to solve this differential equation y double dash plus y and independent variable term you can take to the right side this is a second order differential equation uh with constant coefficients you know the procedure how to solve this second order differential equation with constant coefficients that will be done by writing the inverse differential operator method by writing the solution as uh yc plus yp is equal to general solution <coughs> let y double dash plus y <coughs> equal to sin x will be as that is this one d square plus 1 or operating on y is equal to sin x we have already studied 
variation of parameters undetermined coefficients in the inverse differential operator method. This y double dash means d by dx is equal to capital D and d square divided by it is dx square is equal to d square. This is called linear differential operator. Then this is the sort means uh, what is the first step we are going to consider? You recall the methods uh, we have studied to solve differential equations, ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients by inverse differential operator method, variation of parameter method and uh, undetermined coefficients. Now, inverse differential operator method you can easily solve this problem. Then, uh, this is uh, uh, giving the solution as general y is equal to yc plus y2. What is yc? This is complementary function. Complementary function means it is a solution to the LHS of the problem. Complementary function. Then yp that is equal to particular integral. Particular integral. Then uh, for yc, for yc, let auxiliary equation you have to write. Auxiliary equation. How you will write? Replacing d by a number m. That is f of d is equal to f of m is equal to 0. For m square, here d square is m square plus 1 equal to 0. This implies m is equal to plus or minus i. Then yc is equal to c1 cross x plus c2. It is sin x. That is a uh, complementary function solution for LHS of the problem. Therefore, c1 cross x plus c2 sin x. Then by which method? Inverse differential operator we calculate the particular integral. Then by inverse differential operator inverse differential operator method yp yp is taken as yp is equal to 1 divided by f of d operating on the right side that is sin x that is equal to 1 divided by d square plus 1 operating on sin x. This is inverse differential operator method. How to proceed next? That is the d square is to be replaced by minus a square. That is sin a is for here a is equal to 1, then replace d square by minus of a square. Then that is yp is equal to yp is equal to uh, 1 divided by minus 1 whole square, uh, sorry, minus 1 square that is minus a square minus 1 square and plus 1 operating on sin x. This becomes 1 divided by minus 1 plus 1 operating on sin x. That is 1 divided by 0. 1 divided by 0 we are getting. So denominator on replacing the constant for d square if you are getting 0 then it is the case of failure. Now you can write this is the case of failure. This is the case of failure. Then we need to take the differentiation with respect to d in the denominator. How to proceed? That is yp is equal to when once it is the case of failure means then we need to take uh, x into 1 divided by 
2d in place of differentiation that is d square d square plus 1 was there differentiation with respect to d means that is 2d and x will be multiplied outside the operator that is sin x this is 1 divided by sorry x divided by 2 you can put it outside 1 by d operating on it is sin x then x by 2 that is uh, 1 by d means it is nothing but integration that is sin x dx that is equal to x by 2 that is equal to x by 2 sin x integration is minus of it is cos x that is equal to minus x cos x and divided by 2 then what is the final solution y, y is equal to yc plus yp general solution c1 cos x plus c2 sin x and minus of x cos x divided by 2. So, when you are integrating this one constant should not be added because this is called particular integral. In the particular integral arbitrary constant uh, constant symbol is not to be taken because it is already it is not a derivative it is a type of solution which will be the modified one where it is already containing the real constant therefore here plus constant will not come so this is the final solution of the differential equation but it is not the complete solution then there are initial conditions given and we have to make use of those initial conditions such that uh, at x equal to 0 y equal to 0 and at x equal to uh, 0 y is equal to pi by 2 there are two initial conditions so using those two initial conditions we have to calculate these values of c1 and c2 respectively so that uh, that becomes the complete solution that means uh, complete solution to calculate means we have to make use of the initial conditions now so the initial conditions we have to use given initial conditions are y c log equal to 0 and y at pi by 2 is equal to that is 0 that means here x equal to 0 here x equal to pi by 2 now we calculate Now we find C1 and C2 as then y. This is the solution. So from this step, we substitute x equal to 0 once at x equal to 0 and y is equal to this one is 0. Therefore, left side it is equal to 0, then cos is C1 cos 0 is 1, sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 but x is multiplied. Therefore, c1 takes the value 0. Now, second initial condition we have to use at x equal to pi by 2, x equal to pi by 2 and y is equal to that is also 0. Left side is 0 then equal to c1 this is cos 90 whereas cos 90 is 0 plus c2 and sin 90 is 1 and cos 90 is 0 again minus of that is pi by 2 into cos of pi by 2 that is divided by 2 cos 90 is 0. Here we calculate c2 into 1 that is c2 is also 0. Therefore, the required solution, required solution is given by, required solution is given by y is equal to that is yc plus yp then that is equal to, so c1 is 0 and c2 is 0 that means complementary function won't exist at all only this last term minus x into cos x divided by 2. This is the function we have to calculate. According to Euler's equation, the original function will be that is y equal to minus x by 2 into cos x. 
then we can go for the basic procedure it has a uh, minimum or maximum but it is already appeared there so with this i would like to conclude in this session in my next session i will continue the problems on geodesics and uh, hanging chain problem thank you